Hi guys and welcome to Forge Right. Thanks for dropping in. If you haven't seen the channel before, my name's Andy. The channel is based around learning to become a blacksmith, starting as an absolute beginner. I cover setting up the forge, making the tools required to start smithing, learning basic techniques and developing your skills. I also make metal fabrication videos, which can be very helpful when trying to build some of the tools and equipment that you'll need to use in the workshop. So let's roll the intro and get started on today's video. Hi guys, and welcome to part two of Aiden's Anvil build. Let's get straight into it. If you saw part one, you'd know I'm ready to weld the striking surface onto the base. But first of all, I need to get the top of this base really flat, ground it nice and level and smooth so that it'll accept that surface and I can get a good solid weld. Here's a view of it all cleaned up haven't welded that yet because I haven't been doing the welding I've been doing grinding but I shall touch up that little bit of a uh, score in there with the grind welder and grinding back but I've got him all perfectly cleaned up ground up ready to be able to weld striking surface onto the base so I've got him flipped up side down sitting on top and I've got a square clamp to the table so that I know that the outside of the base and the outside of the top are in line with each other and that is vertical so now it'll sit the surface will sit nice and flat when I put this on the top as you can see I've done some grinding on here she was rocking corner to corner so this corner and this corner were high and it was sort of rocking backwards and forwards like that so i've taken a strip all the way out of the inside of here sorry the corner to corner across here as you can see by the difference in the grinding angles and that's leveled it up really well taking the whole surface back and uh, she's ready to weld so i'm going to wheel the welder over and uh, do a few tacks get the oxy out, heat it all up. It's pretty warm because I've been grinding it, but I'll heat it all up and then I'll give it a good deep weld. Okay, all the welding is done and all of the grinding is done. And there she is, all cleaned up and ready for the next stage. I've got pretty much two things to do left on this thing. And that is down here. I'm going to cut in a couple of slots in here and round out a screw down point there and another one here. Do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to heat treat. Right, I'll just filter over and you can see in here is where I've got in and put in multiple layers of weld so that went right down in a crevice down in here and of course flat along there so it was right down into here so it's been welded multiple times all the way across there and right out and then ground back to a nice smooth finish so that's not coming off got it nice and neatly welded along the edge of there and uh yeah i think it looks pretty bloody good hope you're happy with it aiden i'll just show a little bit of the heat treating the hardening and tempering and i'll probably show myself putting these attachment points on it and then uh, you have seen the whole thing in construction. Clearly you will have it before you see this video because I'm going to make it a bit of a surprise for you. But uh, 
Hope you enjoy it and get a lot of years use out of it before it gets uh, too small for you and you want to upgrade to a large version. Well, here I am attempting to try and do a bit of engraving. I've got the Dremel out with a smallest little burr that I have. I've sticky taped a piece of paper to this bit of aluminium in the corner. I cleaned it up a little bit first. I've sticky taped the aluminium to it with the engraving writing that I want on it. And I'm attempting to just etch in the letters as I go around. Then I'll pull a bit of paper off, see if I can work those letters to a decent depth. Then I'll attempt to paint it with some uh, good paint, get that into the, the lettering, and then I'll give it a nice light brush over with a very, very worn out flap disc and brush the surface back up, leaving hopefully leaving the dark etching in place. Let's see if we can continue on with this very, very slow process. Right, well, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine is as, as to how this will turn out when I pull this uh, stuff off here. But, you know, we'll give it a go. There we go. I can see straight away that I didn't get the O properly, so I'll have to redo that. Some of this is good, some of it's not. Um, but... That's something I can work with. Right oh. To start. What I might do is spin the camera around and I might come in from this side. So I'm getting a uh, more of an even um, oh, even cut, as you might say. There you go, just a rough starting position. And I shall uh, go over to the belt grinder and touch him up. we go. I think it's looking pretty even. Righto, I've got the anvil looking pretty good now. Cleaned it all up. There was a couple of spots on here which I wasn't happy with so I got the welder out and oh look, oh no it's just a piece of spatter, that's all right. I got the welder out again and touched up a couple of little tiny holes that were in here and I've ground it all back well, ground it all back, ground the parts that I've welded back up, shined her all up, got her nice and smooth and looking pretty. Now I'm preparing to harden the face, so I've got the forge started up. She's burning pretty well, want to get a really good hot fire. Then I've got my aluminium square tub here, which has an oil bath in the bottom, vegetable oil. I'm not going to do it in water, even though I believe you can quench 4140 in water as well as oil, but I'd prefer to do it in the oil just to be on the safe side. I wouldn't like to crack any of this anvil, especially where I've welded it there. Um, so yes, getting the fire nice and hot. A big layer of coals will be developed up in there. Keep shoving a bit more. 
bit more coal onto there. Build, build, and build, and build on that red centre. And I'll make a little space inside. End up pushing some of this off to the side over here and out here and up there and make a hollow. Turn the anvil over, drop the face down. This is the side, obviously, that I'm going to harden. This won't harden this step here because it's mild steel. Step's not supposed to be hard, so that's why I made that out of mild steel and not 4140. But this, obviously, needs to be very hard. Let's put 460 in the vise. Gonna waste that bit of that's what I make my right so that'll That'll work. That goes on there. Fix it up. Then we need some holes in there. I'm almost ready to go here. I've got a plan. I've got that deep down in there. You can see the just see the top of the railway track there which means the actual 4140 striking surface is deep down in that red coals down in there you can see the reds coming right up into right up into here it's all red up in here it's all red up in here so the striking surface itself it's clearly very, very hot, and I think probably hot enough to do the job. So I've made a contraption here, a bit hard to see, but that's two hooks with a bent bit of flat bar here. Now this piece I take off, unhook it from out of there, and that allows me to then slide that over the neck of the railway track. So slide it, here we go. It's very, very hot. Slide it over that neck. So this end of it here sticking out, this end of it here is sticking out. I then put this wire back through the hole, which gives me this running along the neck and the two wires sticking up. I then grab my long bar, crowbar here, and I hook one end in on that hook there and one end in on that hook there. Grab one end with that hand and one end with that hand. Pick it up with anvil and dunk it without doing that into the water but there'll be that much weight on it that that's not going to happen but uh, that's my plan I'm hoping it's going to work I've always got the opportunity to pull it back out and close the lid on this steel box like that which should put out any fire if it does catch on fire let's hope it works <laughs> okay here we go Aiden just about to uh Quench your anvil. She's nice and hot. Got me oil bath here. Got me uh, distance jig rigged up. Hopefully I can tilt the anvil over, get the jig on, get it over here, and get it dunked in without any issues and without getting too scorched. 
if things go astray, I'll just leave it in there and flip the lid down. So we'll see what happens, eh? Wish me luck. I've never done this before. Should have had me respirator on. I think that went all right. Everything except the fact that I forgot to put my respirator on. So I was holding my breath for the majority of the time and then trying to turn away to take a breath. I had everything planned except I didn't put the respirator on that I got sitting over there on the bench ready to go. Dumbass. There's the anvil sitting there. Bit of crud on it while it's nice and hot. I shall uh, clean some of that up. It's close now. I have heat treated it. It's too hard to try and get the heat in it accurately to do it in the forge, get it out, get the colour right without getting a bit grubby and not being able to see what's going on and maybe overheating it or underheating it. So what I did was I did it in the household oven which the wife wasn't all that impressed with, but I assured her it wasn't going to stink the oven out or house out. And uh, I think it's turned out really well. So we've got a really nice hard surface there now. And uh, I'm very happy with it. Um, I don't think I showed the fact that I've cut the tight um, attachment points in on the feet now on the base. So that can have some big washers and either some bugle screws into a stump or some coach bolts or something like that. So I'll give it a bit of a clean up on here. You can see where the colour has tainted the side, the top a little bit when I've been giving it the heat treat. But uh, happy with that. And I am hope Aiden will be happy with it as well. ready to attempt to epoxy the label to the leg of the railway track and uh, hopefully that'll hold it i think it'll look better if it's just epoxied on there rather than having rivets or screws or something like that so i'll give that a go if it falls off i'll have to uh, come up with another idea but uh, yeah, going to whack the bit of epoxy on there and uh, clamp it down. Well, YouTubers, there we have the end of another video. It's been a long process. Uh, it doesn't seem to be that big an anvil, but it's a little bit like making this one. Yes, there is less welding and less grinding, less cutting, but nevertheless, a lot of welding, grinding, and cutting. It's a good weight, it's a good shape, it should 
function really well for the person who it was made for. Young Aiden, he's only nine. So this should be a very good sized anvil for him. It weigh, uh, weighs in at 13 and a half kilo, which is, I guess, around about 30 pound. The, the surface comes to 22 centimeters long. So the main striking surface is 22 centimeters long and it's 10 centimeters wide. So 220 by 100 mil. The table is 50 mil, so two inches. And the horn is a further 13 centimeters, so 130 mil. So I think that's big enough for him to be able to get practice making um, small scrolls, bends, and um, the table is good to be able to get shapes on and do any little punching and things like that where you don't want to put a mark on the hard face. This is mild steel, so much softer. That's railway track hardened, but it wouldn't be as hard as this. So we'll see how that wears over time. He's not going to be wailing on it. Aiden, you won't be wailing on it with a sledgehammer or a five kilo maul hammer or something like that. You'll be using probably a one, one and a quarter kilo hammer. We'll see what you feel comfortable with. Um, this is for delicate work out here. This is where you do your major forging. It's got radius edges, so no sharp edges to put creases, which will give you cold shots in. It's got a hardy hole, which is 20 millimeter square. So you'll be able to uh, put 20 millimeter tools in here, make 20 millimeter um, hardy shanks on various different types of tools bent over fullers and uh, a hot cut tool and other different tools that you can make in the future for your hardy hole. It's um, looks pretty good, I think. I am biased, but I'll give you a bit of a pan around of what it looks like and you can judge for yourself. There you go. Bit of a pan around at what uh, the finished product looks like. Hope you enjoyed watching the build. For you guys out there that uh, have a young person who's interested in getting into blacksmithing, you can make them an anvil. You don't have to go out and buy them a cheap as you would say in America, Harbor Freight Anvil, Chinese Anvil that really isn't very good, um, not really designed very well. You can make something like this, forklift time, which is 4140. It's not heavy duty railway track, but a piece of railway track. It's got the two, two uh, little cutouts on either side, so you can, um, get a stump and uh, coach bolt it down or personally I think bugle screws would be plenty. You can get some good six inch bugle screws, a large stump, pre-drill a small hole and just wind them in and that will hold it as solid as a rock. It'll be just as solid as that because the key to any anvil is how it's um, 
the base. It's the the way the anvil is set rather than the anvil itself. Yes, you can have better quality anvils, better materials, but more density. Yes, all important, all good to have. But if you have a really good anvil and you mount it on a cardboard box, it's useless. So yeah, it's all about getting a good footing. Okay, thank you very much for watching. And I know there was a lot of uh, what a lot of people might find boring. Uh, cutting, welding, grinding. But as far as fabrication projects go, this has been very rewarding. So join me again for the next video. Not sure what it's going to be, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Tell your friends about the channel if you think somebody might be interested and uh, stay safe and I'll catch you next time.